The DC Extended Universe just recently had its name confirmed as being deemed legitimate and official by DC's current sole publisher and chief creative officer Jim Lee in March 2020 at the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. After 5 years of fans using the phrase to describe the group of DC films that started with Man of Steel in 2013. The films have since then centered around the Justice League and its cinematic founding heroes, Shazam, the Birds of Prey team, Harley Quinn and even put other villains in protagonist roles with movies such as Suicide Squad. More films have been planned to expand and build the DCEU even more, separate from the alternate live action universes belonging to DC TV series such as Gotham, Titans and the entire CW's list of Arrowverse shows. As the DCEU continues to grow, it leaves us wondering just which villains will pop up next, either as a hero's antagonist or as a somewhat lovable protagonist in their own right. Welcome back Nerd Squad, when it comes to the DCEU the fact remains that DC needs to pick and choose which villains to feature, and not all can make the cut. Today we'll be looking at the top 10 supervillains too scary for the DCEU part 2. That's right, part 2. So if you haven't checked out the part 1 to this list yet and you want to hear about even more scary DC villains that have yet to enter the most recent DC franchise of films, be sure to check that out after this video. Alright, let's get counting. Number 10, Court of Owls. The Court of Owls is a villainous and powerful group who seek to exert and wield political influence in order to shape the world as they choose. They are enemies of Batman and often use their group of highly skilled assassins known as Talons to eliminate those who stand in their way. These assassins are also immortal to an extent, as they are often imbued with a metallic alloy known as Electrum, which has astounding healing properties and can even reanimate and resurrect dead tissue. The Court of Owls was created by Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder. First appearing as adversaries to Bruce Wayne in the 2011 Batman series at issue number 2. Number 9 Granny Goodness. Her name might not make her sound terrifying, but Granny Goodness is not as sweet as her name makes her out to be. She became a trainer of Darkseid's soldiers after impressing him when she herself was selected to train and become one of his elite hounds. Fans of Kingsman may find the story of how she was trained very familiar. During her training regimen, she was given a dog to train herself, who stayed with her and progressed alongside her. After bonding with the animal whom she named Mercy, she was later instructed to kill it. Goodness refused and instead killed her trainer. When Darkseid asked her why she had done this, she revealed that Mercy was worth more than her trainer had been to Darkseid, as Goodness had trained the dog to not only be loyal to her, but to Darkseid above her. Darkseid tested the theory by ordering Mercy to kill Goodness and was impressed when he found the dog actually obeyed. Goodness of course was forced to kill Mercy, but this act would inspire Darkseid to shape and use Granny Goodness as his most reliable trainer and recruiter of soldiers, with Goodness being responsible for brainwashing those she trained and becoming the most loyal and fearless members of Dark Side's army. Number 8, Black Flash. In the comics, Black Flash acts as a symbol of death and also sometimes as literal death for the speedsters. You see, the former Flashes and past speedsters have all been too fast for regular death to touch them, and so it seems instead they have their own version. Enter the Black Flash. The Black Flash draws power from the speed force like many of the other speedsters we've seen. This being is able to freeze time, but only for those who do not possess potent super speed powers. It resembles death in appearance, looking like a corpse of a zombified version of the Flash. While Black Flash has appeared in the Arrowverse, this Speed Force entity has yet to appear in the DCEU. Number 7, Mandrak the Dark Monitor. Mandrak is a pretty confusing entity, but also a fairly scary one. Mandrak was once, or is, depending on what you believe, Dax Novu. And Dax Novu was once part of the Monitor. Following the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, the injuries the Monitor had suffered caused it to splinter somewhat, dividing its body and creating other, smaller monitors. Dax Novu was one of these monitors. He eventually realized that the monitors were parasitic beings who were feeding on the energies of the multiverse, slowly consuming and destroying it. He informed the other monitors of this, but was shunned for attempting to share his realization. Dax then became corrupted, turning into a dark monitor known as Mandrak. While we might eventually see the monitor and anti-monitor make their way into the DCEU films, it's unlikely we'll see this dark monitor pop up anytime soon. 
Number 6. Anti-Monitor Speaking of monitors, we should also quickly touch on another scary and powerful one, sort of THE scary and powerful one, the Anti-Monitor. Anti-Monitor is a supremely powerful villain who threatened the very existence of the multiverse during the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths. He controlled the antimatter universe, and is hell bent on ensuring the destruction of all things. So much so that even after Anti-Monitor is defeated, Necron ended up trapping the Anti-Monitor's body, and as it was later revealed in Blackest Night, using it as a source of power for the Black Central Power Battery. While we might get a sort of crisis inspired storyline in the DCEU with all different alternate universes and timelines from DC and television and film being acknowledged, it's more likely that they'll go the Flashpoint route as opposed to the Crisis on Infinite Earths route. Number 5. Dr. Death The most recent incarnation of Dr. Death from Prime Earth was only around for 5 issues. So it's not just his horrific story and appearance that will likely bar him from appearing in the DCEU, it's also just that he isn't really one of the main villains. He doesn't have as much clout. However, in the few issues we did see him in, he proved to be a terrifying villain and foe. Dr. Carl Helfern was a brilliant scientist working for Wayne Enterprises on a serum that would strengthen bones, causing them to become more durable and instead of breaking when under stress. However, his failed attempts combined with other mental trauma and strain caused him to go insane. He killed his scientific team, injecting them with a failed version of the serum that caused their bones to grow until they were ripped apart. Number 4. The Corinthian The Corinthian isn't specifically from DC directly itself, but is from an imprint of theirs that used to be known as Vertigo. Well, it's still known as Vertigo, but it no longer exists. It was discontinued, and instead, we got Black Label, which is also an amazing line, but everyone was obviously still sad to see Vertigo go. One of Vertigo's most famous series was Sandman, which also featured some of DC's characters who made cameos throughout. The Corinthian, however, was not one of these, but is a character unique to the world of Sandman. While we are getting a Netflix series for Sandman in 2021, I also think it would be super cool to get some darker toned DC films. Among them, it would be cool to get some Sandman or at least a Sandman film. Although the Corinthian might be too monstrous to actually make an appearance, even if we did get a Sandman film. He is one of the nightmares that Dream made. At one point, he escapes the dreaming and ventures out in the world, where he becomes a serial killer who pulls out and eats his victim's eyes. He himself has mouths where his eyes should be and usually wears sunglasses to disguise his monstrous appearance. Ugh. Eating eyes. It allows him to see everything that you've seen, which is, uh, gross still. No, it's still gross. Number 3. Dr. Destiny Speaking of Sandman, I want to talk in particular about another horrific villain who appeared there, although this one also exists as a horror and supervillain within the direct DC Comics universe as well. There he wielded a device he'd invented called the Materiopticon. This device was later retconned to be Morpheus's dream stone, which his mother gave him, when Dr. D appeared in Sandman. Dr. Destiny was hypnotized by the Justice League to prevent him from dreaming and becoming too powerful. As a result, he was driven insane and ended up in Arkham Asylum, wasting away, becoming a skeletal version of himself. When he escaped, he wreaked havoc at an all night 24 hours diner where he tortured the patrons and staff before Dream finally caught up with him. Thank goodness, cause that issue, woo, it's crazy. Number 2. Professor Pig Professor Pig's real name is Laszlo Valentin. He is a former spiral agent who went insane and became obsessed with curing people of their individualism in order to perfect them. When the crime syndicate temporarily took over Earth, Gotham City was overtaken by the criminals who ruled in Batman's absence. Pig himself used the hospital as his own HQ and worked from there, kidnapping civilians, sedating them, and transforming them with strange cosmetic and mutilating procedures, using involuntary patients to create his own horrific Dolatron army. He was created by Grant Morrison and Andy Kubert, and also first appeared in 2011's Batman series. Number 1. Jane Doe Jane Doe is a serial killer who served time at Arkham Asylum. She appears to not have any skin of her own, appearing to be covered in exposed muscle tissue. Instead, she covets the skin and lives of others. While she doesn't appear to have any specific superpowers, it has been implied that she might be possible of shapeshifting. She often gets to know her victims before killing them and adopting their identities, sometimes even wearing their preserved skin as a suit, instead of simply using makeup to disguise herself. For 
example, I could be Jane Doe right now and you wouldn't even know. That's how good she is at it. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for watching, Nerd Squad. What do you think makes a supervillain terrifying? Which villains are you most afraid of and why? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we have an Instagram. So if you are already subscribed here and you want to support us on a different platform, be sure to follow us on Instagram at top 10 nerd official. And when you do, say hi, because I like it when people say hi. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Till next time, you stay nerdy YouTube.